Today on Drawbly, Abby is drawing... Curl. Click that subscribe button if you're new around here. And comment below with ideas of what we can do to improve as artists. So if you remember way back when I did curly, I did uh, some curly hair. Yes, and I kind of suspected that that was the way to take this prompt. So obviously I couldn't do that. I found some pig butts, pig butts with curly tails, <laughs> uh, and I decided I love it. to do this. Yeah, this is an awesome, awesome thing to paint. Of yes, course, who of wouldn't course. want to paint some some cute little piggy oh butts? Oh my gosh, no, pigs are so cute. I went and got to visit my sister's piglets a little bit ago. Did and they look like this? No, they were a little bigger now, and mm. they were a different kind of pig, so their coloring was different. Uh, they were Idaho pasture pigs. I don't, I don't know what that, oh, let's put up an image of an Idaho pasture They're pig. They're a very desirable pig at this time. <gasps> wow. In the pig world, Idaho pasture pigs are preferred. The pig world. In the pig world, Idaho pasture pigs are the pigs of preference. And the reason that's, they are. <laughs> that's a lot of P alliteration. <laughs> the reason they are is because their snouts are slightly more upturned question mark or downturn question mark. Oh, you did tell me about this. So they don't like mess up the ground or something? Mm -hmm. They won't make their whole pasture area into a mud pit as, uh, pigs, as pigs are wont to do. do. Which is probably why pigs, very intelligent animals, get such a reputation for, for being so dirty because they turn up with their snouts. That's why their snouts are flat. They're constantly turning up the ground to get at what it is they eat. Um, huh. So a lot of their areas, unless they're in very, very large areas, get very muddy. So in olden times and in some olden modern times. times and in some areas modern times. I like the simplification you're doing there. Continue. Thank you. People would like tag their pigs, you know, with markings and then set them loose in set the Set them loose? In Out the into the wild? For the whole season and the pigs would just be wild and really? then they would collect their pigs at the end of the season. Um, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, because What if they lost them? You didn't lose them. I don't really... Yeah, you never lost a pig. You didn't lose your pig. Although it was like, I think grounds for feud if a neighbor <gasps> took your pig. Grounds for feud. Okay. By feud, you mean like all out, all out pig war. All out war. Well, the pigs don't do battle, but that would be really cute. <laughs> That'd be cool. Go piggy. Pig, Pigmon, <laughs> I choose you. <laughs> so what I wanted to learn from drawing these adorable pigs, other than just, you know, the general goofy cheekiness of it all. The cheekiness of the it all. Oh. The cheeks. Oh, the little bit cheeks. Oh, so cute. Um, I wanted to practice subsurface scattering. I felt that their ears mm. were a great opportunity to take my first little piggy dipping into the world of subsurface scattering. Piggy dipping. Piggy, there's a throwback for you, all you TikTok lovers out there. <laughs> Uh, there is a lot of subsurface scattering happening in those ears, uh, as well as them also being red, so a little, uh, a little, t uh, like, difficult to tell. Abby, for those that don't know, what is, uh, what is subsurface scattering? I will try my best to describe it, and then you can help me understand what I don't understand about it, because there's a lot I don't, but it's where the light enters the object and comes back out um, and the color maybe of the object influences the way the light comes back out of the object. And when you have this phenomenon in a living organism, which has blood, which is red, you often get like a pink red glowy effect of like the ear or the fingers. Yeah. If you've ever shown a flashlight through your hand, that's... Yeah, it, which if you have never tried and you got your smartphone laying next to you, just turn on your flashlight, mm -hmm. hold up your hand and like, you know... Uh, a way, you know, wait, what? <laughs> Have your phone light pointing towards your hand, pointing towards your face, and you can see like the red of your finger. Yeah. Ooh, whoa. And I'm talking like, hold that fla flashlight like right up to your finger. Mm -hmm. Look at my hand. It's glowing That's red. That's super, super cool. Isn't that I crazy? like that. So I watched. I can see my bones in there. Can you? Ah, uh, no. Oh. Maybe. Wait. <laughs> okay. Well, that's exciting. Um, the original x-ray. Um, so I watched a couple YouTube videos on it and the, my basic takeaway, because sometimes I watch things that are far beyond the level that I can really utilize. As we often do, yes. Yeah. So my takeaway was make it look like it's kind of glowing from within. Mm, um, and an that, inner glow, maybe. Yes. Give it an inner glow. And that is going to 
be what you do to emulate the subsurface scattering. So I tried to do that with my pig ears. For the most part, though, it was mostly just really fun to paint these cute little piggies. So materials have all sorts of different properties mm -hmm. and translu translucency is just like one of those properties. Mm -hmm. So like wax, wax is a, trans or a very highly translucent mm -hmm. uh, type of material. Uh, skin, very translucent mm -hmm. as well. Hence why it can have subsurface scattering. Rocks, not translucent at all. You're not gonna have any light penetrate that material. Uh, skin is one of those where like, wherever you have those thin areas, hence the ears, you're gonna see that light penetrate that material and give it that inner glow. That is cool and that's good to remember for translucent things in the light, they might glow a little bit. Did you know that all materials Pretty much, at least to my knowledge, all materials have the exact same level of specularity. Remind me what <laughs> specularity is? Uh, like reflective level, like how reflective an object is. Oh. So in 3D software, you can control how specular or reflective an object is, mm -hmm. but that's actually not true to real life. Uh, materials are more so, uh, have different levels of roughness. So like your skin, wood, a rock, a piece of like, like smooth slate granite, they're all the same levels of reflective, even though like a smooth piece of granite is going to reflect a really like, almost like a mirror, you know, or even a mirror, they're all the same. Cool. It's just like, depends on how rough the object oh. is. Cause it, you know, if you have like a really rough material, like a rock, it's got yeah. all these places, these crags that the light gets trapped in. Hmm. So it doesn't reflect as clearly. There's a lot of rough materials in our, in this room that I'm looking at now, like the, the foam on the walls. There Very are, rough. there are lots of rough materials out there. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of really cool things that you get to learn by uh, studying 3D art. And uh, a lot of it, you know, I, I've talked about like all the time about how people are like, wait, you don't draw? Like, you know, a year ago, mm -hmm. back before we started Drawbly. And be like, yeah, it's not necessary at all for being a 3D artist, mm -hmm. for being a sculptor. They're actually completely different. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but there are things like what I just said, that kind of knowledge is obviously transferable to 2D art. Like you are sitting here learning about subsurface scattering for the first time, mm -hmm. but I know a ton about subsurface scattering. I use it in all of my sculptures. All mm -hmm. of my characters have a small amount of subsurface scattering. Well, I have enjoyed learning about it. It is very pretty. I would like to do hands eventually. Ooh, with subsurface scattering? Mm -hmm. Hands, I'll be honest, they don't really have much visible. Like you really have to have your light source close to it for that to happen. I would draw them with the light source close to it for Ooh. that to happen. Ooh, maybe they could be like glowing, like holding a glowing object. Yeah. And the light's like yeah. shining out. Yes. Wow. I think that'd be very pretty. Just make it all glowy. I think I want my art style to be glowy. Glowy? Yeah. <laughs> my, my art style is glowy. Do you remember way back in like episode three of Drawbly where you discovered like, I think it's literally called the glow brush or something. <laughs> that and was you're like, so this is my art style. <laughs> <laughs> this is my art style, yes. I Defined think <laughs> almost a year ago. Oh my gosh. The glow brush. The glow brush, I yeah. think I was painting, I don't remember what our prompt was, but I was Crush. doing the gelatin. Madness Cube. No, it was Orange Crush. Oh no, that's right. Oh my God, your yeah. character with its glowing eyes. Oh my gosh. That's the, the <laughs> it turned out so good. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> For really funny art, check out our early stuff. Uh, yeah, go back and check out the old stuff if you want to see uh, a little laugh some... and learn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something. Although we're gonna be saying the same thing about this stuff in like a year from now. Yeah, we are. No, I'll never laugh at my little piggy. They're so cute. You did such a good job on these little piggies. I love Thank it. Thank you. I gave them a little background of paper. Oh, of course. Yeah. You have to get your little paper texture And then in there. I, that 
paper texture really emphasized the translucency issues I had a little bit. Again, I think I get to the end of these and I realize there's a lot more cleaning I probably should have done, but that's okay. I love the little vignette you've created here surrounding the the way like the grass cuts off into the paper. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Thank you. Yes, for some reason I a while ago couldn't remember the word vignette, but now I do all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird how that works. <laughs> My brain's like, you know, oh, remember this word you were trying to think of a year ago? And you're like, no, but uh, apparently I do now. <laughs> anyway, if you want to hear us remember more weird art words like vignette, click that subscribe button and comment below with weird art words because we like them <laughs> <laughs> and this is the part where we say goodbye goomba goomba look at these pig butts they're so cute are we gonna get a pet pig <sighs> no ah uh, i'll keep trying i'll draw cuter pigs and make yes. you want to <laughs> <laughs> that will convince me <laughs> yeah.